Collins Creatures. Today I'd like to introduce Tony the Tiger Salamander. I got Tony because I needed a large amphibian that wasn't a frog for my educational outreach programs that was handleable, so I thought a tiger salamander was the best option. Their scientific name is Ambistoma mavericium, and this one also goes by the barred tiger salamander or the western tiger salamander. The western species is found out west in the Midwest, the Southwest, parts of Mexico and southern Canada. The eastern species is found in southern parts of Canada, the east coast of the United States, and the southeast United States. So tiger salamanders can be found all over the continent of North America. Their appearance is generally black with yellow stripey splotches that can range in different shades. They can be like his yellow, they can be more green, they can be more um, orangey yellow. They, some subspecies even have gray spots and they all generally have a spotted striped pattern. They also get quite large get with the big ones getting around a foot long but generally they are 8 to 10 inches long. They are in the genus Ambistoma, which is the same as the axolotl, and are related to axolotls and look kind of like them, except that when they mature, they lose their aquatic features. When they're getting ready to mate, the males will nudge the females, and they will agree to mate. And after agreeing to mate, the male will lay a spermatophore on the bottom of the pond, or wherever they are, and the female will... Um, fertilize the eggs, and then attach them to something like a piece of grass or a twig. It takes around 12 to 14 days for the eggs to hatch, and another 3 months for the larva to mature. As larva, they have external gills and a paddle-like tail, just like the axolotl. They also don't have their yellow spots. But as they age they and mature, they will lose their external gills and lose the fin on their tail as they get ready to emerge from the water. After they emerge from the water, they generally stay close to their water source, but will basically live anywhere, like grasslands, forests, even semi-deserts, as long as there is enough water and moisture to sustain them as amphibians. And one way they can do this is by digging. They are a species of mole salamander, which basically means they live under the ground for a lot of their life. In the wild, they're basically anything that can fit in their mouth, like insects, other kinds of invertebrates, smaller salamander species, lizards, baby snakes, and baby mice. And if prey is scarce, they'll also even commit cannibalism. So now let's talk about the captive care, starting with feeding. In captivity, they basically anything that can fit in their mouth, which is basically any common feeder, like worms. Bea roaches, black soldier fly larva, crickets, mealworms. Warty glow spot roaches, which is another kind of roach. The substrate in the enclosure should be deep and be able to hold a tunnel because they are mole salamanders and you don't want the tunnel to collapse in on itself. And also should be able to hold moisture so because they are amphibians. As you can see in the enclosure behind me, the substrate is deep and also very moist. 
and it is cocoa fiber. And it also goes with the second big necessity, a large water bowl that the salamander can swim in. And you also see a light on top, and while the salamander doesn't need that, the live plants in the enclosure do. And this enclosure I have is way beyond the standard, and that is because I made a live plant of bioactive enclosure for it. And if you want to see me building a building the enclosure and talking about why it's important to have bioactive, my, the video will be out in a couple of weeks. The downside to tiger salamanders is, while ours is captive bred as we were told by the seller, most of them are wild caught and carry, can carry diseases, like a fungus called Batrachochytrium dendrobatidis, which, is a, which affects frogs but does not harm the salamander. They can also carry ronavirus, which is a virus that affects frogs and other amphibians, as well as snakes, other reptiles, and fish. So, while your wild-caught salamander may not show any signs of disease, it is a good idea to keep your tiger salamander further away from other animals, as well as washing your hands thoroughly after handling or doing any care with the salamander. So that is the tiger salamander. I really like tiger salamanders, I especially like Tony, and I think tiger salamanders are great! So, thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel, like videos, and I'll see you next time on Collins Creatures.